Okay. All right, let's get started. Perfect. We're ready to go. Okay, rock and roll. Over to you, Shanna. Well, as Rob mentioned, uh, for our panelists today, I am Shanna Utgard. I am the success manager here at Defendify, and I am joined by our fearless leader, Rob Zimopoulos, uh, co-founder of Defendify. Hey, everybody. All right, so we are going to start off with a little crowd participation here. We're going to do a poll question. So our first poll question here is, what percentage of your employees are currently work from home? Drum roll, please. Okay, so here are our results. So 64% of the people on this call right now are completely remote. So good news is you're in the right place. That's what we're talking about today. Uh, so we got another 24% uh, of people who are saying that there are only essential personnel left in the office. Uh, we got about 7% that some are remote, others are still on site. 2%, um, um, one respondent saying only select staff are work from home, and 1%, everyone is still in the office. I hope that's because you're an essential service. Okay, so we're going to close that out. And then we have one more quick poll question here. You guys thought you were done? Not quite. They thought they were going to ask the questions. Yeah. Okay. So the next question, this, this requires a little more participation. This is a multiple choice question, so select all of them that apply. What cybersecurity tools are you currently using to support your work from home staff? So we've got two-factor, multi-factor authentication, a password manager, VPN, internal vulnerability scanning, external vulnerability scanning. I think somebody from Defendify just voted because they, they all lit up with 100%. Uh, wireless hotspots, phishing simulations, awareness videos, policies and procedures, and endpoint detection and response or mobile device management solutions. This will be interesting. This will be very interesting. All right. So this is what we have here. Look at that, 80% using VPNs. Two factor in place, that makes me very happy. What's that, 75% of people are, are have some form of two factor authentication in place, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. What about, um, what about uh, policies and plans, where's that at? About 50%. 50% of people have that. And how about training their team on cybersecurity? What, what's that looking like, Shana? Um, about 53% on phishing simulations and 48% on awareness videos, so about half. Great. Some and external uh, vulnerability scanning is also at about 48%. And about 50% uh, of people using internal vulnerability scanning, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. We are. Well, that's great. Let's move okay. on and share some more content with these folks. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, so first thing we have on our docket, for those of you who haven't had a chance to take a look at it, uh, what sparked this entire webinar was uh, as our team was working on bringing Defendify remote, we learned a few things along the way. We used a lot of the modules within our own platform, and uh, we, we pulled our internal IT people and found what they were doing and, and what their checklist kind of looked like. And we made a resource and shared it with our customers and our partners. Uh, if you did not receive a copy of that work from home checklist, you can go ahead and go to that link there on the right hand side of the screen and you can download a copy. It is not gated. You can just go to it. We don't have any visibility on who is going and downloading it. So please just go and grab a copy of that checklist. But we got a great response from that and we wanted to um, turn this into a little bit of webinar and share a few of our tips. We also wanted to make it quick because we realized that things are kind of crazy right now. So uh, we're trying to keep this down to a half an hour. So what Rob and I decided we were going to do is share our top five lists of work from home tips. So you ready, Rob? I'm ready. Let's go. What's number one? Okay. Number one is secure and test your remote connections. We are at our least rational when we're at our most vulnerable. What a oh. great statement. Isn't that the truth? Uh, so a little bit more on tip number one, secure and test your remote connections. Hey, let, let's start off with just talking about um, securing all the devices that are, are 
have anything to do with the network. So the number one key spot you've got to get to is you've got to begin with updating and patching everything. We're talking about hardware. We're ensuring that your software is up to date, um, your firewalls, um, anything that has anything to do with the network, absolutely for sure, and software, and also IoT devices. So if you have uh, physical security cameras, if you have access control systems, if you have printers, you've got to make sure that everything is updated and patched, um, and especially VPN connections. Anything associated with remote connections is where I would start right at this second, because these are where uh, criminal attackers are going to really start to focus. They know that there's work from home individuals working, using these remote tools, make sure they're patched. Now, you may go and go through a, a large process of checking everything and ensuring that they are updated and patched. But um, the challenge you're gonna have is continuing to ensure that those um, updates and patches are in place. And that's where vulnerability scanning can come into play. If you don't know what vulnerability scanning is, it's a, a technology tool that can be deployed that can scan externally and internally of networks. It can also provide uh, reports back to you telling you if you do have any vulnerabilities um, on, the, on the current uh, network or with devices and software and so on. And they'll rank them. They'll rank them critical, medium warning, and they'll identify to you, you know, where you really need to get started. And having those vulnerability scans running on a regular basis is, is very important so that it will alert you if you have anything out of date. Now, um, the other place to go is two-factor authentication. I think we talked at the beginning when we did the poll and we learned that a lot of people had two-factor authentic uh, authentication in place. If you don't know what that is, it's the little image on the right-hand side. It's basically after entering a password into a piece of software where it's gonna send you a code. That code might be a text message. It could be a code that's on an app that's changing all the time. It could be a small little uh, you know, key fob that you carry around with the code. It could today be a USB key um, that might be plugged in your computer to allow that to happen but no matter what it's having two things it's having that password and then a second layer of uh, authentication uh, the statistics are pretty are pretty wild that small businesses use about 20 different um, cloud-based applications in their daily activity you know QuickBooks and um, maybe they're using Salesforce and all types of different different software and one of the challenges is that a lot of times employees will use the exact same passwords on all their different systems and all it takes really is one compromise on one system um, where maybe, you know, I tell the story all the time about the, the pizza place that you might order from um, and someone in your office might do that, um, send, some, send some food to their home, use their work email address, perhaps use that password that they use on all different applications. Perhaps that pizza place gets compromised and an attacker steals you know, the credentials or passwords from the people who put in their login and password to register to be able to order from that pizza place. Um, that puts your entire organization at risk and ensuring that you have two-factor authentication is in place. I think the best way to think about it is if you're going to start somewhere is definitely start with anything that has remote uh, activity for your employees. So VPNs, remote desktop applications, anything that's being used there, ensure that that two factor is established. And in the end, you wanna to get to a point where anything that you're putting a password into that has the capability that you're gonna have two factor authentication on. And especially now moving to um, a remote workforce, anytime you're making any changes in the configuration on your firewall to accommodate that, make sure you're running another external vulnerability scan. Absolutely. All right, let's move on and go to number two. Well, before we do that, we've got poll question number three. And poll question number three is, how confident are you in your work from home IT security configuration? All right, so very confident we've tested it, about 25%. Somewhat confident, 55%. A little confident, 15 And non -con not confident at all, 5%. What's the percentage of people who are very confident? 25%. All right. 10 out of 40 that voted. Well, hopefully we're going to give them some tips here to help help make them a little more comfortable. Let's Absolutely. Go to let's go to number two. Okay. Number two, assess your cybersecurity posture. Still assessing at this point. All right, folks. One of the key things that you should do is a cybersecurity assessment. Now, you may have done one in the past. And just to take a step back, what is a cybersecurity assessment? A cybersecurity assessment is a process that an organization goes through and they follow some form of cybersecurity framework that reviews 
um, all of the controls they have in place, I guess you can think of a little bit like a checklist. And uh, those different controls are really wide in nature. There's a lot of different controls that you need to go through. Today, cybersecurity is a heck of a lot more than just having antivirus on your computers and a firewall. Um, an assessment might go through and review, you know, what policies and plans do you have in place? It might review what, uh, it should review what type of technology you have implemented inside of your organization, you know, on your computers, on your mobile devices, on your networks. It's gonna review if you have scanning and testing in place that's required, if you have password management, how your systems are configured, and also, you know, what are you doing from a remote workforce perspective and what things are in place there? You can see it should also, um, uh, as you see there in the middle, number 27, it's talking about, you know, uh, where employees can go as an example um, from a website perspective. And it's it's asking the question about when they're in the network and when they're outside the network. So again, these assessments should have both sides of it. It's interesting. There are a number of different cybersecurity frameworks and one of them uh, is developed by NIST. And NIST has a specific framework for uh, bring your own device and telework um, applications. You can go and read it, um, review it. It's very detailed, uh, might be complicated for a number of different people, but no matter what, if you have just converted your entire organization to work from home, you should go back through a cybersecurity assessment and see where you stand now with your new work from home environment. Shan, anything to add to that? Uh, no, I think you covered it pretty well. Uh, so tip number three, set work from home expectations. I love this little clip, but yep. only because it's against company policy. That's that's Elise in our office. Only Shan curly hair. <laughs> Shannon, you're getting a little quiet on the call, so oh. just let you know. Oh, that's a lot okay. better. All right, so let's go to this one. Set the work from home expectations. Can you click to the next slide? Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to give these folks a little overview of what, um, how they do that exactly? Yeah, absolutely. And, and a lot of this is covered in some uh, policies like the acceptable use tech and data use policy. Uh, but a few tips because you're no longer working in the privacy of your own in your office at work, you're probably, you know, in a home office and you got kids and everybody's screaming and running all around. So when you leave your seat, lock your computer. Um, I love control alt delete when you leave your seat because it rhymes, but uh, you know, Windows L works just as good and on Macs, I don't know what you do on Macs, but you know, something different. Um, another thing is prohibit family members from using company computers. Um, there's a great Ningeo video about this. Uh, if bring your own device, store company files in company storage and not on your desktop. So if you're saving things to your personal desktop when you get back into the office, uh, you won't have them. And also there's a lot of security risks with that. Uh, do not write down passwords store in the brain or in a company password manager. Um, we are huge fans of password managers around here uh, and also not recycling passwords. Make a strong, unique password for each application that you use and keep print printed sensitive documents stored securely, adhere to a clean desk policy. This kind of ties into a few other things as far as um, respecting the privacy of what you're working on, you know, shoulder surfers, if you're in a, a, some sort of public environment, if you're, you're in Maine, that's not probably happening because we're pretty locked down. But, um, you know, if you're in a coffee shop or still traveling for some reason, um, but also just making sure that nobody can see your screen and nobody's looking over your shoulder and going back to locking your computer when you leave your seat. There's a few other ones like you'll see on the right hand side of the screen. If you are using a company uh, device, please don't do any kind of personal um, shopping or any type of activities like social media or email on your company computer. This is a, a poster from the Defendify portal called It's Nothing Personal uh, about those personal activities. Yeah, the real key here is you, you want to develop a policy that you're going to present to your entire team and have them understand, you know, what the guidelines are in regards to using um, the company applications, company software, company devices, if you've, if you've deployed those out there. And you really want to train them on it at this point in time. So, so review your current policy, ensure it's covering all those key things in regards to working remotely, um, ensure that you train everyone to it. So take the time to review it with them, explain to them why these guidelines are in place. And then from there, you know, you've, you've set the baseline so that everybody understands and then you can move forward. But the fact you've moved from work from home is really important. Speaking of training your team. <laughs> 
here here's an image from my house right now with my kids in the background it feels like that sometime um you know training your team is going to be uh, is really important for a number of different reasons but one of the key things is the number of distractions that are happening right now in the work from home um, areas you know not everybody has a home office today they might be sitting in their kitchen or their living room so we want to give you some tips on this let's go to the next one you know the the, the big thing right now is that um you know uh, cyber criminals are really focusing on causing crimes during a t you know times of need it's it's really a sad thing um so there's definitely been an increase in this specific time in the way that they're making these attacks so um you know researchers have found for instance um app uh, you know mobile apps um this is specific to android on the left hand side there a coronavirus tracker um, that people are downloading to their mobile phones or we're downloading to their mobile phones that actually uh would launch ransomware at some point in time um, it's really important that you know you make sure the application you're downloading you're actually downloading that from um, the proper stores and you're not just doing it through maybe an email that you received or some other format i'm really ashamed um, researchers found that um, in the top right corner that the coronavirus map that was being viewed by you know millions and millions of people um, that there was actually a malicious version of it running around and people were going there and it was trying to install malware on people's uh, devices and then also that um, you know there's been a huge increase in the number of domains that have been registered with the word coronavirus in it and researchers are finding that you know um, a lot of these uh, domains that have been established are tying to malicious websites and also being used for phishing attacks as well so yes it, during times of need um, cyber criminals obviously not nice people um, are going to take advantage of these situations. So it's really important that your team understands, you train them, um, that they need to be really cautious at this point in time when they receive these types of attacks. And here's some other examples of things that they might receive via email. So news about coronavirus, um, maybe some emails that look like they're coming from the CDC or the World Health Organization. Um, you know, that's a real phishing email that was running around. Um, disaster relief. So today I know that the, it looks like the package is going to be approved. Um, so I can imagine that there are going to be a number of different emails going towards CEOs, business owners about grants and loans. And anytime we start talking about finance uh, situations, uh, it can always be concerning. And then company updates. Remember that a lot of times phishing emails that are targeted towards employees look like they're coming from leadership inside of your business. So it might be coming from the business owner to the employees or business owner to a finance person that looks like it's coming from them. That's where their email is being spoofed. So it's really important that you train your team to understand that they, need, they should verify first um, if they get an email that they weren't expecting that is asking them to click on a link, open a file, um, you know, send some type of personal information, make changes or pay an invoice. All those things are really important to be, uh, be careful about. All right, and tip number five, revise your incident response plan. Uh oh, that's not good. There is no plan. So the incident response plan is an important document in a business, and I think quite often it's really overlooked. But what it does is it outlines exactly what your organization is going to do in the case of a specific incident that occurs, especially on the cybersecurity side. So now that you work from home, you're going to want to review your incident response plan and make sure you understand how you're going to deal with different scenarios. As an example here, you know, what are you going to do if there's a lost or stolen device um, when people are working from home? You know, how are you going to deal with an incident of malware or ransomware when your employees are working in their home environments? You know, what if an employee does have a, an, an incident of breach of sensitive data? So for instance, maybe they emailed, which they really shouldn't be doing, but perhaps they emailed some sensitive information to the wrong person. How are you going to deal with that? And then finally, I think it's important that if you do have cyber insurance coverage, that you're having a conversation yet again with your cyber insurance carrier and explaining to them that you are in a work from home environment, have that conversation with them, ensure that you still have proper coverage in place. Um, because I do believe that the increased risk to your organization, I think the, there is an increase in risk to your organization in the fact that you're working from home if you were not doing that previously. All right, so those are five tips. Uh, we also have a bonus tip. 
The bonus tip is about building a work from home culture. Uh, this was a document that we prepared for ourselves because Defendify has a really great culture. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were still able to maintain that outside of the office. So Elise on our team uh, worked to put together some of these friendly work from home tips and we wanted to share that out as well. So if you want a copy of that, please feel free to go download that at defendify.io slash WFH tips. And can you guys still hear me? My internet went a little uh, wonky there. You sound great, Shanna. Okay, perfect. Um, and I, I think it's really important to really quickly touch upon that, but um, it, maintaining the culture, we've done a lot of things. We've had some fun with video. We were talking about that in the, in the beginning of this conversation. We've done different backgrounds. You know, we're trying to keep some, some social events going, um, but these are, are really great tips to keep your, your culture of your organization still intact as you switch to remote. And ready, ready for the next one, Rob? Let's do it. All right, here's our fun special announcement. So folks, um, coming off of this checklist, we really wanted to give back to the community and, and allow people to take some steps in regards to, to double checking where they stand from a cybersecurity perspective. So we're, we're excited to announce that we're releasing a free Defendify Essentials package. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna include three really key modules that you can utilize right now to um, help you get more secure on the work from home front. And it starts off with you being able to utilize it for a cybersecurity health checkup. Um, I mentioned before about performing an assessment. Uh, the Defendify cybersecurity health checkup tool does that for you. It will take you through all those controls, tell you where you stand, grade you, and tell you how um, you can make improvements to your cyber posture. We're also gonna include um, our threat alerts engine. So uh, the Defendify platform sends you um, multiple times a week alerts regarding um, specific types of attacks, vulnerabilities in pieces of software or hardware um, so that you can react accordingly depending on your organization's needs. And especially in a time of need right now with a work from home environment, a lot of those notifications and alerts are around work from home. And uh, we wanna share that with people who, um, who really need that right now. And finally, we're also gonna include um, vulnerability scanning of, of the external network for one IP address in the essential package. So that will allow an organization perhaps to scan their external network to see if they do have any known vulnerabilities that can be detected from the outside um, and use all those, um, use those results to get things buttoned up. So yes, today we're launching the Defendify's Essential Package. It's free, um, includes those three modules. If you're interested in learning more, you can go to defendify.io slash essentials and learn more about how to get that free package. But uh, we're excited about being able to help people um, at this point in time and in the current situation. So for those of you who answered our poll question about how confident you were with your IT security and your work from home situation, if you answered anything other than very confident we have tested it, please go to that essentials page and get set up for that external vulnerability scanning. Double check, triple check, make sure that all of the holes are closed up. Okay, last but not least, any questions? You can either use the chat functionality in the Zoom window or the Q&A side. So I think there's one question there. Someone's asking, can they get the slide, Shanna? Yes. Um, Rob, what do you think? Do you want to? Oh, we're going to be, yeah. So anybody who's attended this, uh, this webinar will be receiving a recorded version via email. So you'll be able to, uh, to watch the video all over again and share it with whoever you think would benefit from that. And also, uh, a lot of the slides uh, tie into the work from home checklist and the uh, work from home tips as well. And those are both available on uh, our website. So you can go pull both of those. Another question. Oh, we've got a bunch of them coming in. Nice. Okay, Rob, how would you rank the risk of personal and home computers and mobile devices using company VPN? Uh, I was, I, if I understand the question correctly, this individual is asking, what if I use a personally owned device or a personally owned mobile device to access a company's network? Uh, I think it's a real risk uh, depending on how it's been set up. So there are mobile device management software that can be deployed on uh, personally owned devices that can be managed by the company. And when those are deployed on those devices, it does give 
Um, it does give the company a lot more control as uh, to ensure that things are being protected accordingly on those devices. So as a couple of examples, uh, they can put website control on there so that you can't, you know, use your work computer and go to websites that aren't protected. Um, it can ensure that there's, for instance, password protection uh, on that physical device so that you have to log in before you can actually get on your computer. Um, and then also, you know, ensuring that the um, IT personnel can provide the appropriate uh, endpoint protection on those computers as well, such as antivirus protection as an example. But, you know, if you're just going to allow people to take their personal devices and then put a VPN on it, let them spin right into the network without having any type of control on it, I think there is definitely an, a risk associated with that if, you're, if you don't take those proper steps. Awesome. Another question with folks working from home using residential internet, how important is it to turn your computer off and get offline when not working? Does closing the app meet th this need or should you turn the computer off? When working from home, turn your computer off, get offline when working. So one of the risks you have when you're, if you're not, you know, VPNing in is that your device is communicating on the network in your inside your home network with all the other uh, devices inside of your network. So your kids are using their devices, you have uh, potentially, you know, smart TVs and so on in there. Um, so if, you, if you're not segmenting your computer off, for instance, with a VPN connection, um, you're communicating all there. So I would say if that's the scenario, um, yeah, you should close your apps and turn your computer off. Absolutely. Now, remember, remember, if your team is trying to manage those devices externally, they may ask you to keep those devices on at a certain period of time so that they can patch and update them. But, you know, I think that question's a, a tricky one without knowing more of it. Okay. Got another question. What's your opinion of using corporate team viewer for remote access? Um, I'm not going to speak on a specific brand, but we can talk about what, what this tool is. This is a remote management uh, tool. It allows an individual to um, to access other computers that um, from a remote location. So a lot of times um, used by IT teams or um, IT managed uh, service providers to provide service to their customers. Um, their necessity, you have to use those type of tools in order to provide uh, remote management. Um, one of the key things I think you need to do is we talked a lot about making sure that those pieces of software are updated and patched. I think that's important um, so that if that cloud application does, they do release a new version to make sure that you are running the most current one. And then uh, the second part of this is ensuring that you have two-factor authentication enabled for all users of those systems um, so that you have that second layer of protection there as well. I think that those two key things, which we talked about earlier, um, should definitely be in pl place for any type of remote management tool that's out there. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to learn more about how to secure your work from home environment. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. Have a great day. Thanks, Shanna. Thanks, Rob.